Well, I just want to provide a, a couple of quick messages uh, in relation, obviously, very challenging events uh, that we are facing, uh, both uh, the Transport Minister, uh, in addition uh, to the Emergency Services Minister, and the Commissioner all make some comments. Uh, ultimately information uh, that people can listen to and respond to in terms of uh, the events uh, we are facing. Uh, there is no doubt that this is a very severe storm event. Indeed, it's uh, a once in sort of 10 year event. Uh, it is probably more severe than it was anticipated. So clearly the consequences are quite significant uh, across New South Wales. And it is clear uh, that we're in the midst of very challenging weather. Uh, certainly, uh, we want to start by uh, saying that it, is, it looks uh, very much like uh, we have lost uh, three residents. Uh, they are elderly residents and at the moment those circumstances are being worked through but we do want to know uh, for their families uh, that our thoughts and, and prayers uh, are with them. Uh, it's in the Dungog area, uh, particularly heavily affected uh, by these events, uh, but obviously it's too early to say what has happened, uh, but we do know uh, that we have lost uh, three residents and uh, it is obviously a tragedy uh, for their family and friends uh, and all of us are thinking of them at this point in time. Uh, it is a very significant event. Uh, the calls for assistance are huge. Uh, there's been over 4,500 calls uh, and indeed 3,000 calls uh, to Triple O. Uh, clearly, everyone that's calling will be responded to, uh, but we need to ensure that it is the life-threatening uh, events and incidents uh, that are getting priority. So uh, as people call, no, we will get to you. Uh, but importantly, it is life-threatening at this point that is getting the priority, uh, and that is uh, something that we are working very hard across. So if you are calling, uh, and the, the ministers will give details of all the contact points again, uh, again, try and prioritise in the sense understanding that there are some life-threatening situations and that is where the, the priority is, is being directed. Um, there has been over 47 flood rescues and over 200,000 homes and businesses that have lost their power. And again, um, there is a number of people, our workers, that are working very hard to restore that power. Uh, but it is a constant event with the winds, the strength they are, and continuing to be uh, of high strength, um, that uh, the priority will be uh, to get power back to hospitals uh, and our aged care facilities in particular. Um, so that is where we're prioritising. We will get to the power and uh, they're working very hard to ensure it is restored. Uh, but people need to be prepared to be patient uh, while we focus uh, very clearly uh, on the critical services in health uh, and aged care. Um, I also, we need to note um, that uh, the storm in terms of the weather forecasts uh, now suggests between now uh, and midnight could become more severe, um, particularly in the Hunter and down to the central coast. Um, so there is a, a strong advice uh, to everyone across the greater metropolitan area, and that's really from Illawarra through to Newcastle, uh, to start to head home uh, as soon as you possibly can. Uh, there'll be specific advice that will come into Newcastle in particular, uh, but what we're calling on people is uh, for bosses to be flexible, for people to make arrangements and an orderly way um, to start to head home as soon as you possibly can. And on that journey, obviously, uh, patience in terms of public transport uh, and at the same time, uh, careful if there is uh, floods or waters across the roads, uh, ensuring that you do not enter them. Uh, that is the biggest risk uh, at the moment uh, that we're seeing. Do not enter uh, flood waters. There's again those flood rescues. Many of them have been from people entering uh, flood waters that they shouldn't be entering. Um, so we're asking people uh, to do that uh, in particular. Uh, the last thing I want to do is just to thank um, the workers, and there are thousands of workers uh, across these areas uh, doing this state proud, um, both in the RFS, uh, the fireys, our police, uh, the SES, uh, transport officers, um, all of them out there uh, working in incredibly difficult circumstances, but first and foremost, focused on helping people uh, in incredibly difficult positions uh, right now. So I want to thank them for their work. There's a lot of work that has to be done, uh, particularly over the next 12 hours. Uh, the hope is that it starts to ease uh, from midnight tonight, uh, but there's no guarantees. So uh, we thank those workers for the work they have done uh, and the work they are going to do over the next 12 hours. We couldn't do it without them, and uh, we generally thank them. So I'll ask uh, the Emergency Services Minister, then the Transport Minister, then the Commissioner. So a couple of points. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Premier. This is a one-in-a-decade storm, uh, the likes of which we haven't really seen since 2007. Uh, can I first place on, my, on, rec on the record my admiration and thanks to the 500 SES volunteers uh, who are risking life and limb to ensure that the people of this state uh, can get through this tragedy and this disaster like they've got through every other disaster. Can I also thank the Rural Fire Service volunteers, we have some 200 of them supplementing the SES 
Uh, and of course, our permanent fire brigade, uh, 1,000 members of Fire and Rescue New South Wales. Uh, this is a, an incident that can avoid, we can see avoiding uh, unnecessary risk by people just making some common sense decisions. Uh, if you do not need to cross a road, don't do it. If you cannot see a road because of flooding, don't attempt to go over it. Uh, those who have life-threatening incidences ahead of them, if you are in a life-threatening situation, uh, please call Triple O. You will be seen to. If it is not life-threatening, if the if the if the matter can be uh, can be postponed, uh, please call the SES hotline on 13 2500. Today's events uh, are going to test our emergency services, uh, but they're there to be tested. Uh, we have seen, as the Premier said. 4,500 responses thus far. That's a big number, but it's not a number that we can't achieve and not, and not a number that we can't address. Uh, I also ask members of the public to be very conscious of the fact that there are a lot of emergency service workers out there. Um, probably, if you can get the opportunity, a quiet thank you is something that wouldn't go astray uh, because these guys come from families who are probably worried sick about the fact that we have fatalities and we have injuries occurring uh, from one hour to the next. I also want to place on record my thanks to the SES call centres and the emergency services call centres. Uh, they've averaged nearly 200 an hour. Uh, and that is a figure um, that we really need to be conscious of because that just goes to show the human tragedy that we've seen over the last 24 hours and certainly the anxiety that we expect. Um, this is an incident that we will get through like we get through every other incident in New South Wales. Uh, but we do very much need the, um, the encouragement of the people and we certainly need the people of New South Wales to take, to take uh, care when they're deciding whether or not to go home this afternoon and making sure that they are going home in the daylight hours if at all possible. Because like any other operation, as soon as the sun sets and we're fighting with um, night time, uh, the, the, these does, this does make any, uh, any rescue operation a little more difficult. So thanks very much.